Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome back to a brand new series of Europa Universalis 4. This time around we are playing with the new Cradle of Civilization DLC. I got a key for it yesterday, had a little bit of a look around, haven't really played using the DLC yet, so we will be discovering a lot of this as we go. I did produce another video that I uploaded earlier today, you can go ahead and watch that if you want. That is basically me sort of going through, reading through the patch notes notes of the things that have been added but actually going through in the game and sort of highlighting where those buttons are and where those changes are to the interface so it's a good way if you just want to get like a rundown of what has been added in the expansion or the dlc um, but for this series I will be sort of explaining things as we go and as we find them. I've decided that I'm going to play as the Mamluks. I've never played as the Mamluks before, so it could be an interesting little thing. They have a couple of missions they can do. Uh, one is to form Egypt, one is to form Arabia, so we might try and uh, get one of those if possible. Forming Egypt is, is usually a uh, lot easier, but we'll see how that works out. One of the first things that has changed is that uh, quite a few new provinces have been added or altered around the sort of Northeast Africa, Egypt, uh, Middle East area. So there are definitely some changes around there to be done. So let's have a quick look what we've got here with the Mamluks. If we go and have a look at our diplomacy screen. So we have Fadal and Hejaz are both our vassals. Um... They are, well, Hejaz is all the way down here, not quite adjacent to us, but we do share a sea zone. And uh, Fajal is over here. I'm not sure that's how it's pronounced, but that's probably how I'm going to continue to say it. Fadal. We're guaranteeing the independence of Medina and Cyprus. Uh, and we obviously have uh, military access with our, uh, with our fellows there. We've been rivaled by the Ottomans and Aragon, which is hardly surprising, and Kara, which is up here. We might as well rival those same people back. There's not a lot of point in uh, rivaling others back. But we'll see who we can get as friends here, because that'll be quite useful. Let's just check out... Well, before we check out our missions, let's just have a quick look. So, our Sultan, our ruler, is a 223. You'll also notice that our... Um, where are we? We, are, we follow the uh, Shafi school... Has the following relations with other schools. Hates Islami, Jafari, and Zaidi. Ambivalent towards Hanafi, Hanbali, and Maliki. Gives us plus one merchant. Uh, rulers do now have their own religion and culture. Uh, I still haven't... Which is fine, because, I mean, that's something that was in Crusader Kings 2. But I still haven't quite figured out what impact it has on the game. Uh, we have 333 on technology. And if we just go ahead and look at our ideas. So we start with some cavalry combat ability and an extra 25% trade steering. And if we complete all the ideas, we'll get some provincial trade modifier. And uh, as we go through the idea groups, we get uh, mo mostly about trade, really. Global trade power and trade range, yearly prestige, manpower recovery, discipline, which is always nice, production efficiency, stability cost modifier, and some more trade stuff there. Missions we have available to us, improve our prestige, improve relations with Dulkadir, and protect our brethren in Kasir Ibram. Kasir Ibram are where now? Um, probably nowhere that we can easily reach. Um, Q-A-S-R, let's just have a look. Q-A-S-R, you are... I still can't find you even though I've just clicked on you. Where are you? What what am I what am I missing here? Can't type for a start. That's part of the problem. Oh, right here. Um, so what have I got to do with you? Uh, owned by the Mamluks. So you want me to go and grab this? Well, I guess it gives us a free. Um, are you got any allies, any buddies, any friends that are going to help you out? No. So I guess that gives us a free uh, a free CB straight the way. So, sure, let's go ahead and grab that one. Uh, and then what we can do here is try and get an alliance with somebody else, because the Ottomans are going to be a, a bit of a bit of a pain. Um, Hungary might possibly, they wouldn't accept an alliance at the moment. Um, we're definitely going to need some allies before too long. 
Uh, what about Naples? Well, you're part of Aragon, so getting an alliance with you might be tricky. We can get an alliance with Tunis, so sure, let's go ahead and pick that one up. And uh, we'll try and get one with maybe Austria if we can. It's probably going to be tricky. Let's go ahead and send a, a, a diplomat to go and try and improve some relations with Hungary there. Let's just unpause the game. We'll probably be playing mostly on speed three. We are in a military alliance. We already have too many diplomatic uh, relations, which is interesting. So how many are we allowed to have? Obviously, different government screens there. We can go ahead and boost Bedouin straight away for the Diplo power, but I think we'll, we'll save it. Um, right, click on this one. There we go. So we... Tunis, Medina, Hejaz, and... Fadal plus Cyprus because we're guaranteeing them. Yeah, that makes sense. So we've gone slightly over. Okay, so we're only going to have the one the one for now. So first question is, do we actually have ourselves any leaders available? We do not. Um, let's go ahead and get one. We'll recruit a general. Uh, we actually get to name our generals now as well, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and name my general um, Bobby Fenders, one of my Patreon supporters. Uh, usually gets to be the leader, but... And you can see this will actually now give us 1% army professionalism. So what this army professionalism thing is, is if we go into the military screen, you see you've got this line across the top here, this progress bar. Now every time you recruit a general, it increases your army professionalism. Every time you recruit mercenaries, it reduces your army professionalism. You can also do some other useful things like down here, you can slacken recruitment standards so you can lose some professionalism in order to gain an instant boost of manpower. And also if you've got an army that actually has a leader leading it, you can enable army drilling which will basically give you some yearly professionalism and also gives a chance of a skill increase for the general. Now using enable army drilling uh, does put the army on low morale. Uh, but it does keep them at full maintenance. So it's a little bit like using the um, the drill training in Hearts of Iron in many respects there. Um, so we might do that later on. But the reason you want to get this up is because as you hit, hit each of these milestones, you get something useful. So at 20%, you can build a supply depot. A supply depot can be built in any... Um, any province you control, so it doesn't necessarily have to be one you own, it can be one that you occupy in a war, or any that your war allies control. And basically, building a supply depot in a province grants the entire region that that province belongs to um, an increase in... Um, what is it? An increase in supply limit by 50%, and it also gives an increase... Uh, well, when you are recovering your troops, your losses, it counts as a friendly province. So that's quite a nice thing. They only last for two years or until the province gets reoccupied or recaptured by the enemy. At 40%, you get this May Refill Garrison. I haven't worked out exactly what that does yet, but I assume it's something to do with regaining manpower. Speaking of regaining manpower, at 60% army professionalism, you regain manpower when disbanding. Hurrah, we've been waiting for this for a long time. I don't know whether you get the entire amount of manpower back or just portion i guess we will find out at some point uh, at 80 percent generals are 50 percent cheaper to recruit and at 100 percent you get reduced morale army damage taken by reserves 50 percent and army drill game modifier plus 100 percent so some nice stuff in there so we've got our armies let's go ahead and put these armies together we do have some ships here as well uh, during war we'll go to a friendly port any mission will resume when the war ends well that's always worth having isn't it but i don't think we need to worry about that too much they've changed some of these buttons around now the sort of the tick boxes for attaching they've now just replaced straight up with buttons so we've got some lights here we also have some galleys and some transports let's break the transports off and leave them home uh, let's go ahead and take the rest of them group them together and we'll go and give them a mission to protect trade in whichever node gives us the best profit won't be an awful lot but it'll be some worth doing we don't have any leaders at the moment. We are making a little bit of money. And by leaders, I mean advisors. Uh, admin's usually the most important. And we can get a uh, stability cost modifier guy. Now, you'll also notice now that all of the advisors actually ha uh, have a religion and a culture. Like I said, I don't really know what exact impact that has on the game. But we will find out. 
Now, you are technically the wrong religion. Let's just go with the inflation reduction guy for now. We can't really afford a second. Actually, we could afford a second one. Um, we definitely want a military guy. Manpower modifier. Well, we don't want to go up to a level two because we can't really afford it. So let's go ahead and grab you. And we could probably... I mean, it is trade efficiency. Let's go ahead and get the trade efficiency guy there. Right, so we've got our three advisors. We're about to go to war. We have an alliance offer from Cyprus. We might as well take it because we already have. Uh, we're already sort of protecting them. Let's march you guys down here so we can get ready to take this fight. That should be fairly easy. Yeah, let's let's get alliance offers with these guys. It does make it a little bit difficult if we don't want to protect them, but that's fine. Royal marriage offer with our um, vassal. I know I'm taking attrition here because we, we can't really deal with the, the force. I mean, in fact, we don't need that huge amount there, do we? That is a little bit silly. Let's go ahead and break that down a bit. Um, let's split it in half. Um, gives us three cavalry. Let, yeah, I think we'll just put it back to how it was originally. You stay there. Um, you can detach one cavalry. I shouldn't have really put them all together. There was no need to. You go, guys go and stand back over here. That's fine. It'll be good. Uh, Royal Marriage Offer from Tunis. Okay, good. Right, let's group you guys together. Um, we should also make sure that we are embargoing our rivals. So let's go ahead and issue embargoes here. Want to make sure that we keep uh, Royal Marriage Offer from Medina. Yep, that's fine. Right, before you get any ideas about doing anything, let's go ahead and declare war. You do have an ally now, which is Alodia. Alodia is this one down here. I don't think you're going to be much of a problem. Well, let's keep this army down here just in case we do need to deal with them, but I think we'll be fine. Um, didn't declare the war yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's confirm. So this shouldn't be too problematic. You're just going to march straight into there. We do have our forts turned on. As long as I can afford to keep them turned on, I probably will keep them turned on. We will need to go down and kill that guy at some point, but we can do that. Uh, we do need to embargo Aragon, so let's go and issue the embargo there. And we do have a free diplomat, so let's go and... Which one's our other rival? I've forgotten already. Uh, look for ourselves, and it is... Koyunlu, which is that one. So let's go and issue an embargo to you. Okay, so that's all three of our rivals embargoed. Yeah, you're trying to move some guys down there. You might try and come back up around on this side, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Uh, estates losing some influence. Again, not too problematic. It would be nice if you weren't standing on the same tile that I was and giving me extra unrequired attrition, but there you go. So, we probably will have to protect against the Ottomans at some point. That's usually inevitable when you're playing anyone in the Middle East. But we definitely want to sort of eat our way down into Africa and as much as the Middle East as we can. If we can get ourselves nice and big, it'll make it a lot easier to fight the Ottomans when the time comes. It would also be nice if we could get an alliance with somebody like Hungary. Um, we're at war. If we weren't at war... Uh, we're still too far away and you've got a neutral attitude towards us. It's unlikely we'll get hungry on board, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, the Papal States, uh, not the same religious group, neutral attitude, distance between borders. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get anyone sizable. Maybe the Timurids, or if Afghanistan forms, maybe we can get away with doing that, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, it looks like Hejaz has actually come over here and done some work for us, which is really nice. So what we'll be doing, as usual, is trying to grab as many uh, provinces as possible early on, just to go and build things up. Yeah, you still have a little army down there. And I guess technically we will need to go down there and um, siege this out in order to end this war. Uh, in fact, Hajaz has gone down there, but they're going to lose out to that one because they're a little bit outnumbered. Um, let us go and march down here. We know we do have a way through. Now, they're converting. Here's another thing as well that you can do in this expansion. Is it's actually possible to send your missionaries to convert your um, your subjects' provinces. So, no longer do you have to wait for your subjects to convert provinces themselves. You can actually do it manually on their behalf. So, we're going to go in here and try and catch these guys. 
We do have a good leader. They rolled a nine, which was unfortunate, but there you go. If we can separate piece these guys out first, it'll make this a little bit easier for us. So let's just go and march straight into their capital. Not too bothered about your peace offer just yet, because we know you're not going to give us what we want. Um, the Takia. For centuries, many of the followers of Ali have considered it necessary to hide themselves and feign adherence to the other religious customs in order to keep their faith alive. Authorities in Man have increasingly come to suspect that there is an increasing number of Shias among the local Sufi lodges, and would like the blessings and attempts to root them out. So, we could lose some prestige and move towards legalism. Gain some local unrest. Or we could move towards mysticism. Uh, now, if we go ahead and look at our religious uh, screen, we can see that legalism gives us more tax, more manpower, and cheaper tech. And mysticism gives us more missionary strength, more morale of armies, and more fort defense. We don't need the morale of armies right now. We don't really need the manpower. I do like having the uh, national tax modifier. So let's try and stay towards legalism. It will give us some local unrest, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we'll deal with it anyway. Uh, we also have this uh, option to invite a scholar. We've already got one at the moment. But inviting a scholar gives you various different things. So this one gives us plus one merchant. What we might be better off with is one that gives us something like uh, reduced aggressive expansion impact or um, like shock damage, reduced damage received. There are some quite good ones there. But you do have to have your relations up with certain people in order to be able to use them. So we will have to wait around on that one. So let's finish off uh, just sieging this area out over here. And then we can consider moving down and maybe attacking those guys. I'm not too quite sure where they're going to go. I've got a three stack there, which is interesting. I am going to... Um, well, I'll take a lot of damage here, apparently. I'm just going to go march out here and, and attack those guys if I can get them. You guys continue the siege. Yeah, they're going to get caught out. So let's go ahead and take that fight. Unfortunately, we do have the crossing penalty. Hopefully, Bobby's going to get some good rolls for us. He's got a couple of shock pips. They rolled a, a zero there. Uh, they did roll a six in the shot phase. We did win the battle, which is good. Of course, every time we do this, we do take losses, which is unfortunate. But we'll see if we can run them down. Uh, these guys actually want out of the... Are these... Um, yeah, you guys want out of the war first, don't you? You don't want to be in this war. So if we sue for peace with you, uh, we basically just want um, a white peace, really. You won't give us war reps or anything. Um, oh no, you both have very, very similar... It's not these guys that want to peace out. They just have very, very similar um, flags. So I thought it was one, not the other. But this should be the armies dealt with once this is done. Again, we've got that river crossing again, which was unfortunate. They did get a good roll. We got a much better roll than them, unfortunately. That was in the fire phase. Yeah, shock phase is they're getting much better rolls than us. We can put some extra men in here. We might just be able to turn it around. There we go. Let's just go and run them down and try and finish them off. We've really taken a hit to the uh, size of our armies here, but if we can uh, if we can just kill these armies off completely, it'll be a lot easier. Right, there we go. We've got their capital now, so what we should be able to do right here is piece them out. They shouldn't be willing to stay in this any longer. We've got 10%, so we should be able to go and get war reps. Yep, so these guys are now out. So let's bring you, or what's left of you, back up to here. You can move back towards Cairo, and we'll piece these guys out as well. So we want to sue for peace. We want to take both of these provinces from you. 16%, well, 16 aggressive expansion, 9% overextension. Uh, we'll take some money from you if we can get away with it and send the demand. So there we go. We've instantly gained a couple of provinces and we've completed our mission. Um, and what do we have here? Uh, vassalize Ramazan, conquer Hamasien, or protect against the Ottomans. Well, I certainly would like to protect against the Ottomans, but... Equal or larger army than the Ottomans. Do you know we're not far off that, actually? We can field that many um, units. Uh, we are losing some money at the moment, but we are reinforcing. Um, 
Let's go and take that mission to protect against the Ottomans, because I think we can probably get away with it. We need to work on coring those. So protect against the Ottomans, we need to have 33 or more. We're already on 32, so technically we only need to build one unit. So if we just go ahead and build like one extra infantry and one extra cav on that army up there, uh, that should even things out for us. I'm also going to move these guys here and get them doing some army drilling. Hopefully that will allow us to get some of that uh, army professionalism. Um, it's currently at 11%. We can lose 140 ducats for a, a, an estate to gain some loyalty, or we can lose 50 admin power. I think I'm actually going to spend the money, because we are still making money right now. So you guys are going to go into... I guess if you go into low maintenance, you won't reinforce. So let's let them sort of build up first before we do anything else. Now we do have quite a few forts and they are still on. Uh, what have we got here? Move towards legalism. Local goods reduced. So what have we got here? Playing the courts. While the Shafi school is officially sanctioned school of the Sultanate, there are many courts in Cardis throughout the land, and all four of the schools of faith are deemed appropriate for civil procedures. This means that to some extent it is possible to play the courts by bringing the case before a Qadi of a school considered more likely to give a beneficial ruling in a specific case. An entrepreneuring merchant, Raz Garib, has become so good at this that he has angered not only the local population and his business competitors, but also the local governor. There is not much we can do about this without making inroads into the the privileges of the ulima so we can in move towards legalism well i want to stay towards the le uh, legalism really uh and i don't want the state maintenance to go up so we'll go ahead and take that one um so what we got here the coptic religion has long had a presence in cairo some of the patriarchs followers abroad have even claimed that we are keeping copts captive in our land perhaps they need a reminder of the situation so 50 Diplo power, 15 Prestige, or nothing in at all. Uh, let's take the... Uh, prestige is pretty terrible at the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and take the Prestige. And it didn't work, and someone's opinion of us has dropped, but that is fine. Uh, we've completed our mission. What, am I not getting pop-ups to tell me that these missions are complete? Because I don't seem to remember seeing them. Um... So improve our prestige, which is a pain. Hamasian, where are you? It's Hamas. Hamasian, you are down here. Again, we can take that. It'll give us a core. Well, it'll give us a, a claim. Um, you are allied with Ethiopia and Enera, but I don't think that's too much of a problem. It can probably be both, to be fair. Um, an Ethiopia is there. Where is an Enera? Because I have no idea where you guys are. You are down here somewhere. Which one am I looking at? You are that one. Oh, you're a single province and you're all the way down there. Well, you're not going to be problematic to us at all. So, yeah, we are losing a little bit of money there. Some of that is going to be the reinforcements. We don't have any corruption at the moment, but we're probably paying that down. Yeah, once once these guys are finished reinforcing, we probably won't be, lose, be losing quite so much money. I think we are going to have to go and maybe turn one or two of the forts off. I mean, we're not directly at war with anybody at the moment, but having these forts all turned on is costing us a lot more money than we can really afford. So let's get those forts turned off for the time being. You guys have pretty much... Um, recuperated in fact on the next monthly tick you probably will hungry we're no longer at war i'm guessing you don't want to oh you would actually accept an alliance now that would hurt us with diplomatically because we'd be out sort of over the numbers but having an alliance with hungary doesn't seem like it would be a bad thing they're not currently at war with anyone they have a truce with the ottomans so let's go ahead and see if we can get an alliance and they have accepted which is fantastic so again that does put us over our relationship limit but that's fine. We can uh, we can make do with that. Now, another thing that you can actually do in Cradle of Civilization is on your advisors, you can actually spend money and promote them up to the next level. 
which is a, a really cool thing. Yeah, we're quite down on Diplo at the moment, but Diplo's probably the least important tech. So we need to go ahead and take you guys. We'll probably still wait until you are at full health. Royal marriage offer from Hajaz. Well, they are our vassal. We should also probably make sure that we are sucking up to at least one of these guys. Um, so that we can integrate them. So let's go ahead and start improving relations up here on Faddle. And then we can integrate them and we'll do Hajaz later on. But we're well over the 20 minute mark so I'm going to end the video there. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you are going to enjoy this series of EU4 with the Cradle of Civilization DLC. I'll see you on the next video and until then, goodbye for now.